Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, look, I promised you a 392 walk around, and I'm gonna do it. I'm also gonna show you my camp setup because I've done a video on Phil Craft Survival's channel about my free spirit recreation tent. But we're waiting for the sun to go down. Everybody's hanging out. Uh, we got everybody camping out here, and it's so peaceful, so beautiful here in Moab. I wanted to show you kind of like the 392 all the things I've done to it so far in conjunction with my bike. I'm using a rack and ride setup on the rear end. So I'm mobile everywhere with my bike, just like Hernandez is with his uh, Jeep Gladiator. So the 392, uh, a Rubicon has all the options, all the features. Uh, one of the things I did out the gate was I get rid of these stupid end caps. They just didn't look really well. This looks super clean but it's not too much. I got the loop in here to protect the radiator with uh, big and small game, especially being in Utah. The worn winch, I got a still line in here. I, I wanted to go with synthetic. I think that's just a better option if you're into a worn winch, but the still line was in stock. They had a backlog of inventory for the synthetic line. Make sure you check this out because this integration into a stock bumper is really clean. You're gonna need a plate for it, but it's really clean. Basically, that's it on the front end of the vehicle. Stock steering rack, components, suspension, all the things. You can run aftermarket 37s in this case, but you're going to need a bump stop on the back end, which is just a buffer pad on the back of the suspension. This is awesome with beadlock. I needed these very specifically for a trip with, in Moab where me, Andy Stump, Tim Kennedy, Evan Hafer just did some really lackluster preparation. <laughs> I mean, we just kind of sent it and then that bit us in the butt, but we were prepared. So it wasn't that bad. It's actually a good um, test of our preparation. <laughs> Now here's, I don't know a lot about these tires because I just took them on a recommendation. I love these tires on my truck, but these Recon Grappler ATs, these are 37 by 12 and a half by 17s. These are made by Nito, are great on the truck. Low noise on the road, on the highway, but you see this right here? And you see this right here? And you see, on my spare, where's it at? This right here, that has me um, concerned. I'm rolling with low PSI and I need to get over a specific terrain. What I've noticed is the ply on the sidewall isn't as thick as I want. Now, if you got experience with these recon grapplers and you're an off-roader, let me know what you think. I've done a lot of off-roading in moab with these wheels and i've been seeing those cracks in the sidewall aired down to about 12 psi um, which is obviously really easy to do um, when you have a beadlock ring like on these methods some of the internal features that make this real easy i got these 67 mounts which are real cool because you can mount the phones they tie into this really easy install Coming around to the back, um, I'm running a disaster bag as always. This is the 40 liter disaster bag with the partitioned elements in here. You got a 300 blackout in here as well. Um, I run a couple bags as a base. I don't like the organization of the back end of this because I just got stuff flopping around, which I typically like the ability to adapt what I want, but I'm going to likely get a goose gear set up with just at least one drawer so I can keep some of these elements in here. This is a worn recovery bag. It's got all the things I need. I got a hatchet off to the side and I have my recovery bag, which includes recovery for power. I have an ARB uh, tire repair kit, um, all the basic stuff I need re for recovery and emergency supply. Another thing I also carry in here is a more robust first aid kit. This is basically a mass casualty kit, tactical combat casualty care for me and my family. And obviously I have that in here as well. Um, all the soft gear I stuff in the sides. <laughs> I love you. Um, I got all the soft gear stuffed in here. 
Um, I like doing that because there's not a lot of room in here. So any room I can get, I'm going to put in here. I wouldn't mind getting one of those nets. I've seen the nets that drape down here because there's a little bit of real estate I might get an access to. I might throw a net up here. Electric generator. This top end ties into these one kilowatt batteries. So in this case, I have two kilowatts. Um, and this gives me plenty of power where I could charge it at home, bring it on a trip, and really not have to worry about powering it up on most three-day trips. If I need to power it up, I have a solar panel for it. I could trickle charge it during the day when I'm out riding motorcycles or with the family. And this keeps all my accessories powered, which is awesome because I don't have to run the battery in the rig and potentially compromise it. Only thing I'm missing, which I've said this before, is I want the ability to tie this into my alternator and charge this on the fly. So like if I had a dongle here or like a plug here that allowed me to adapt this and run it off the alternator, that would be pretty sick. So let me walk you around to my spare. Now I'm running a full size spare on here, but with my rack and ride setup, I can get that bike on the back, no problem. Um, you need the eight inch extension. I'll leave that link down below for that rack and ride setup. Um, come in here. I got the free spirit recreation set up. This is the XL. It's 78 inches long. Fits pretty well on the Rhino rack. I do want to come up with a different mounting solution because I just don't think this is optimal for this. I might even pull this and put this in my truck, just depending. Uh, it's not that it's too much, but it, if I want to overland, if I don't get a better mounting solution, I'm afraid that it's going to move around too much because this thing likes to get off-road. And I don't just overland it. I do off-road it because it's a Jeep. That's what you do with the Jeep. Um, last but not least, let's go over here to the light setup. So I have rock lights, Casey highlights rock lights. I have them here in the wheel well. I have the full Pro 6 setup on the front, which is amazing. That gives me plenty of illumination at night. I mean, this thing will light up the entire road. Uh, they're my favorite light setup for sure on a off-road vehicle. Guys, that's basically it, man. Nothing crazy. It's not as exciting as Mike Hernandez's vehicle, but it gets the job done. Awesome family rig and something that I completely recommend. Hope you guys check it out and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Later.